Hey everybody, welcome back to Name That Reaction, America's favorite game show where you can play along at home because we can't come to school because everybody's dying. All right, so right now I just did a video on the Wolf Kishner reaction that YouTube spat back into my eye because apparently you can't have a video longer than 15 minutes. So I decided we don't need to worry about the Wolf Kishner reaction that much. I didn't really like it anyway. So now we're going to move into the final aldehyde and ketone reaction. And that is called... The Wittig reaction. The W is a V because whoever developed this was from either Romania or Germany. This could be a Dracula reaction for all I know. I promise you with what you're going to see today, I'm not simply just making this crap up. All of this is real. So, the overall purpose of the Wittig reaction is you turn a ketone or aldehyde into an alkene. You turn your C double bond O in either of its forms to a C double bond C. All right, that's not too scary. Let's look at the overall reaction. So what we're going to do is we start with a ketone, and I'm going to choose cyclopentanone. And then we react cyclopentanone with this. I'm thinking my way through this here. And I'm freezing, sorry. We react it with this. All right, for those of you who don't remember Weagle speak, this, the phi group, is an aromatic ring. You can use that as an abbreviation as long as the aromatic ring isn't doing anything in the reaction, if it's just sort of hanging out there like cabbage. All right, this is your ketone. I hope you realize that without me having to say it. And this is called, again, not making this up, an illid. It is called an illid. More on that in just a second. Your product here looks like this. This alkene. So there's the product, there's what the reaction does. Before we look at the mechanism, let's do this. Let's look at our illid. Quick reminder, the illid that we are using looks like this. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. All right, part of the illid here is this is a zwitterion. Again, we're in German now. Zwitterion means you have a mo it's two ion. You've got a positive and a negative charge on the same molecule. Overall, this molecule is neutral. It's not char it's not considered charged, it's considered neutral. Now, the illid has a resonance form, and that looks like this. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Dr. Weagle! Yeah? If phosphorus, if phosphorus has a positive charge because it's got one too many bonds on it, how does it become neutral when you make a pi bomb there? Answer, I have no clue. This is a part of science that I have never completely understood, is how these illids form, what makes them stable, etc. I know how to make them. I've made them on several occasions, but this overall chemistry there, nah, it's a little scary. All I will say is this. 
that when you generate this ILID, these tend to be blood red in solution. Okay, how do we make an ILID? Well, we start here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called triphenylphosphine. And we react triphenylphosphine with an alkyl halide. The phosphorus attacks that carbon knocking off the iodine. Now, what kind of a reaction does this look like? No, really, what kind of a reaction does it look like? I can wait. This is just like class. I can wait for one of you to say something. It looks like an SN2. By golly, you're right. This is an SN2 reaction straight across the board. There's no almost like to it. So... This is a flat-out SN2 reaction, which means your alkyl halide needs to be methyl, primary, or in a few very rare circumstances, secondary will do. A tertiary alkyl halide is right out. All right? So here's the product of what we've made. Here's the product of our chemistry together. All right, the next step in generating the ILID involves using butyl lithium. What butyl lithium will do is remove one of those hydrogens on the carbon next to the phosphorus. So let's go through that again real quick so you see it. The, the butyl lithium carbon will, nuke, will I do an acid-base reaction on this proton, removing it, and the electrons that we formed swing down onto the carbon to generate this. That's all there is to it. You have to do these cold when you make them. What's cold? Dry ice and acetone usually works about negative 30. See? And you generate these ILID molecules that we can use in the future. So, what do I want to review about here? You use triphenylphosphine in an SN2 reaction. All right? This is an SN2 process, meaning the alkyl halide needs to be small. Methyl, primary, or secondary. Using butyl lithium to pull off that proton, it plunks you back over here at the ILID that has a resonance form. Okay, so how does the Wittig reaction itself work? Here we go. We're going to take a look right now. So here's what we've got. We've got this. the Wittig, and we also have our carbonyl. What did I use before? Cyclohexanone? I think it was cyclohexanone. Let me go back and check real quick. Cyclopentanone, excuse me. I knew if I got that wrong, one of you would have a stroke. So, all right, here's how the reaction works. The two steps of this reaction occur simultaneously. This is a concerted reaction. This is a concerted reaction. So the product that you get here, or rather the intermediate, I should say, because it is non-isolatable, looks like this.
All right, you generate this intermediate. This is what it looks like. It's a four-membered ring. It is a four-membered ring. The oxygen and the phosphorus are bonded together, as are the two carbons that were involved. So when this ring collapses, because that's what it's going to do. This is a decomposition reaction. I like to think of it as a ring collapse. These two bonds are going to break at the same time. So what am I talking about here? Well, there's a new bond formed between the phosphorus and the oxygen. That is just not coming through well. Hold on. There is a new bond between the P and the O and a new carbon-carbon pi bond. So your product looks like this. And this is how you make the carbon-carbon pi bond. Last thing I'm going to talk about here, last thing I'm going to talk about is stereochemistry. And I hear everyone going, yuck. E is preferred over Z. And that's the end of the Wittig reaction, ladies and gentlemen. Go back and take a look at it. Message me or either email me or put something in the comments below so that if you have any questions, I can answer them there. Don't forget you have an assignment due this Thursday. It's the pop quiz. And otherwise, I hope you all have a great day and I will be making a few more of these videos tomorrow. See ya.